Yes, we are here. We're still here. We're going to be with you throughout this here on Yes. And, you know, sometimes we get some pretty special guests. In this case, we do. Our man, Adam Adovino, is back. I guess, Adam, you're just going to be come a part of the Yes family during this quarantine time, huh? I'm trying. I'm trying. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But, uh, nah, I mean, this, this Zoom life is real. So just trying to take, it, take advantage. Yeah, we, we all are now, uh, we are all firm believers in Zoom. Uh, everybody who's, uh, who's any, like, has any broadcast association now has gotten intimately familiar with Zoom. You know, Adam, like, you and I, um, we both grew up in New York, different areas of New York, but ended up facing each other in high school, as has been famously documented now, yeah. where I, I um, so proudly popped out to shallow center yeah. field against you. The most um, celebrated pop out of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, man. Well, because I mean, I've told this story before, but it was uh, my junior year, your senior year, I believe. Okay. You, you graduated '03. Yes. Yeah, and I graduated '04 from high school, and uh, like you know, in those days, you just get like whispers of like, you know, yeah, yo, this guy's supposed to be nasty or whatever, and like, oh yeah, this dude throws ninety, and I was like what you know like yeah. 90 might as well be 100 when you're in high school you know no doubt. And, and then i remember i saw the the when i saw your slider it was like the first time i saw like a hard nasty breaking pitch where it's just like wait that's way harder than the fastballs i usually see and so yeah popping out against you after looking at that slider whiz by me for strike one i felt pretty good about man I love it. At that time, you don't you don't think that anybody's noticing. So it's yeah. kind of funny to know that maybe you're the guy that people are whispering about. I mean, I've been on the other side of that, of course. So uh, it's kind of funny. You know, did you play against Pedro Alvarez during that time? Yeah. Too, Adam? Yeah. yeah. Played with him. I, I played with him on a team called the New York Giants. I was like kind of a ringer. Me and this kid, Rob Yotis, would go up uh, uptown and play for this for the Giants. And uh, Pedro played on that team. Um, I remember him as kind of like a, like a, like a chubby second baseman, <laughs> but he hit like huge home runs. I remember we played in a tournament in Connecticut once and he hit like three home runs. And the fourth time he got up to bat, they, they wouldn't pitch to him. They were throwing him balls. And so he yelled to the guy in Spanish, like, Hey, Venica, like throw it right here. <laughs> and so he did. And he hit a fourth home run. <laughs> and it was like incredible so but then I played against him and he homered off me I remember uh one time at Bergen Beach in Brooklyn but um yeah I've known him for a long time there's a certain pride I feel like that tethers different northeast baseball players together right because when you think about players who make it in the majors a lot of times we think about you know kids who grew up being able to play all year round outside you know, and I know there are various facilities now that have evolved for playing year round indoors, you know, in the Northeast, but it's much different. And you're obviously at an advantage if you're in a warm weather climate where you can play, you know, outside all year round. But there's that element. And then there's another element of it, which is not only do you play, you know, your high school ball in the Northeast, but you also play your college ball there. One of my good friends, Joe Panic, is part of that group. And I know he takes great pride in it. I mean, Adam, how real is that club? You're one of those guys who grew up Northeast, played college ball Northeast. Like, I mean, is there a sort of a connection amongst you guys who have been able to do that? I think so. I mean, from, for us growing up, I remember even when we would go to tournaments, like uh, we would scare the other teams because we had a lot of Latin players and we were real loud and, uh, you know, the way New Yorkers can be. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I mean, let's call it what it was. We would just think that those kids were soft. I mean, they didn't have to grow up with the crappy fields and the cold weather. And they had, we felt like they had it all on a plate for them, like scouts and all that. And we were like grinding. So, yeah, that's kind of how it was. I mean, uh, we took pride in that not only when I was in high school, but when I was in college, too. We loved when the Southern teams would come up to us and then, you know, we would give them a licking and kind of send them back to their warm weather. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what was the like what was the sort of the toughest field you played on uh in the city in high school you think so the the parade grounds which is like a pretty uh like legendary field in brooklyn i mean it's just a it, at the time it's been renovated since but at the time it was just like one of those you know no grass in the infield um uh, there there might be a soccer game going on in the outfield you might have to kick some people off the field with your permit to get on the field to begin with 
a lot of kids are wearing mouthpieces because there's rocks everywhere and you might catch a ball up in your face did you ever i don't know if you ever had this experience but did you ever uh like have a field that was so hard that you were like afraid to even slide on it. Like you yes. knew your knee was getting busted <laughs> up. Like, yes, I didn't 100%. even want to slide on some of the fields. <laughs> I can remember a game where it was one of my friends. Uh, I forget if it was, it, it, I had three other seniors on the team with, uh, with me my senior year. And I forget if it was my boy, Greg Dreyfus, who now works for the MLBPA actually, or Andrew Knackman or John Croner. It was one of those three guys had a hit sometime early in the game, like slid into second base and just the, like the pant leg was gone from the knee down, like just totally torched. They're bleeding down the leg. Just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Like I do remember that. So Adam, you and I were both, obviously we're New York, uh, we're New York guys, New York baseball people. Let me ask you, you want to play a little game of Yankees, Mets, or both? Sure. So I'm going to throw out a name. You tell me whether they played for the Yankees, the Mets, or both, all right? All right. Um, Tony Clark. I know we played for the Yankees. I'm just going to say Yankees. Both. He played for both, really. He okay. did. Yeah, I had actually forgotten that he spent time with the Mets. That was a tough one. This one's a tough one, too. By the way, I should preface this. These are all pretty difficult. All right, um, all right. Tony Tarasco. Uh, Mets. He played for both. Both? Yes. Uh, yes. I don't remember him on the Yankees. Man. I know, man. I know. He played for both. They, you think, when we think about Tony Tarasco, we think about uh, Jeter's home run. Yeah, he was you out know. there in right field. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Were you at that game? I was not at that game. I definitely watched that game, but I yeah. was not at that game, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Mike Lowell. Uh, Mike Lowell. Red Sox, Marlin, man. Yeah. I guess Yankees. Yeah, Yankees. Yeah, yeah. Brief, brief time with the Yankees. This is an interesting one. Jeff Karstens. Uh, I know he played for the Yankees. Uh, I'm not sure if he played for both, so I'm just going to say Yankees. You're right, Yankees. All right. You're handling yeah. this well, man. Um, all right, Trot Nixon. Man. That's I know the these Red guys Sox through and through. Yeah, you, right. You associate more with another team. All right. I have no idea, so I'm going to guess Mets on this one. Boom. Nailed it. Nailed all right. it. Um, all right. This is a tough one. Gerald Williams. All right. Uh, obviously, Yankee. So, since it's tough, I think it's both. <laughs> you know what? As soon as I said it, I was like, well, gave I just gave away. that away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Way to use the context clues. He was so fast. I used to love Gerald Williams. Oh, man, I loved it. You know, my, my sister was obsessed with him because of the pink bat. Remember he? Yep, pink bat. He was like the first guy, right, or something? Yep. I still he, remember him charging Pedro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, he also, like, I mean, he's Jeter's, like, he's Jeter's Tom Hagen, you know? I mean, oh, I, really? I mean, he, or he, he's one of his best friends. I always feel like there should be – like a documentary series on the friends of Jeter, you know, because I feel like he keeps his circle close. He yeah. has his people who he trusts, you know, he's not just letting anybody in. Gerald Williams has been a long time mainstay of the Jeter clan. Wow. So he's keeping See, it tight. He's not telling anybody outside of the family what he's thinking at any time. <laughs> that's right. He's not pulling a sunny. Um, yeah. All right. How about this one? Mike Glavin. Uh, yeah. Mets. Yep, nicely done. Very nicely so he's done. The, he's, the, he's actually the head coach at my college now. Oh, really? Northeastern, yes. Tom Glavin's brother, Mike Glavin, head coach. Wow. So, oh. I met, so I know him a little bit. So that one I had a little advantage. Yeah, that one you should get correct. By the yeah. way, one other thing on the, uh, on the Jeter front. How about, did you see he's, uh, his house is being rented by Tom Brady? I did not see that, but yeah. that's epic. That's pretty. <laughs> makes sense, I guess. <laughs> like, how, how awesome is that? Like, yeah, like if you were thinking of sort of like the parallel sports lives, you'd yeah. say Jeter, Brady, right? Like those two exactly. guys, and now they're basically going to share a home. This guy's in Tampa Bay. That's just weird. It was, it was an interesting choice, wasn't it? Yes, definitely. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Here's – um, I'm going to give you one more and then two bonus. All right. All right. Brooke Fordyce. Uh, Mets. Yeah, nailed it. Dude, you're crushing this. Um, uh, all right, two more bonus questions. 
Yeah. Uh, these two men managed both the Yankees and the Mets. However, we want to just dial them up as players. So Joe Torre as a player. Uh, I, I think Mets. Nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. And Yogi as a player. Well, Yankees. And oh. Mets. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, Mark. like inaugural season or something. Yes. And then I know he managed the Mets too. Oh yeah, you already said that. So that's yes, true. yep. He he yeah. he managed and played. And for the Yankees, obviously, he he managed and played. So, yeah. um, but I got to say, Adam, that was uh, pretty impressive, man. I got a long history of baseball card, you know, pack opening and that sort of thing. So, me and my friend Jared, who I'm sure he'll be proud of me on this one. Maybe a little disappointed at the first two that I didn't get them both, but we'll see. Isn't Jared the diehard Star Wars fan too? Yes, yes. All right. Well, I, I don't. Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but assuming you don't end our Yes Network Zoom relationship, I think yeah. the next one of these we may do a Star Wars trivia game, pitting me against you or you against me. Oof. I think I think you have the advantage. I better start studying up. Better get Jared on the phone, man. Man, Jared. Jared's tough to beat. He's tough to beat. <laughs> He's, he's on the next level. Uh, well, Adam, <laughs> thank you for doing this, man. Stay safe, stay well, and, uh, and we'll do it again uh, sometime soon, uh, hopefully with some Star Wars trivia. All right, sounds good. Same to you. Stay safe.